Right, so I'm a bit gutted really because I should be having this up and running by now. It's an absolute scorcher of a day. The sun's fully out and it's absolutely boiling. This is hot, so it's hot enough where you can't really rest your hands on it. So that must be pumping out the heat if I had it set up. So really need to get onto it. And what I'm gonna do now is just gonna get some um, battens to go around the edge, the framework. Let's see what we got. Just gonna use some scrap. What have I got? Um, I have got some of this two by one. I've got some of this, which is gonna be perfect. 50 mil tall by 28. It's gotta be tall enough to screw to the side of the ply and still have enough. So it passes the pipes. If I rig it up at the top. There we go. So it's passing the pipes. There we go. So it's going to sail down whatever I put on the top, whether it's um, Perspex or some polythene, anything. Not too sure. This will give me enough height to be able to pass that Perspex down, pass the pipes, and ultimately keep the heat in. So I'm going to dig out some of this um, two by one, basically. Tantalized. It's been treated so it's outdoor stuff. Um, a bit like all the fence panels that you see around you, they're all tunnelized. So I dig that out and fix that frame on now. And let's dig it out. All right, so there we go. We've got our long lengths. We've got a 4.8 meter and two two meter lengths, which is going to be plenty to go around our 1.2 meter square board. And all I need to do is cut them to length and screw them around the actual perimeter. Let's get that done now. <laughs> All right, so the handy thing about having a workshop in your garden is that whenever you want to do some DIY in the house or anything like this, any experiments, anything at all, I've got the tools right here. I've already got the, all these tools lying out from when I did my last YouTube video, not put them away. But anyway, all right, so we've got a combi, three mil drill bit set up, impact drill with a Phillips bit in it. I'm gonna use 550s, I've only got zinc plated. I haven't got any garden screws, any decking screws, you know, the green, green screws that won't corrode, but oh well, it is what it is. I could just replace the screws if I have to some, with some stainless steel ones. And I've got my tape to cut my battens or to mark my battens out to cut. And now I've got those, I need to bring them out and then measure the board so I know what length to cut the battens at. And let's take the drills and measure them out. Right, let's start with this end and the opposite end. So we need to cut two at 1287. Let's double check. 1287. We can actually cut these two at the same time as well. Remember, these ones will sail past, and the batten is 25 mil thick. So all we need to do is add on 50 mil to that. So we've got 1220, let's add on 50 mil, so that's 1270. So two at 1287, two at 1270. Ah, it's got my bike in here, gonna get it all dusty. Damn. Okay, got two pieces set up on my choppy. Do two in one, do two at the same time. So I'm gonna line up at that end and I'm gonna do my longest pieces first. Whenever you're doing a cutting list, always cut your longest first, so you can then use the off cuts to do the small pieces. So we've got 1287. Two pieces at 1287 and two pieces at 1220 to make our frame. Let's go and use the 50mm screws and screw them on around the edges. 
Okay, so our pieces are all cut to size. You can see the idea now. It's given us an upstand, so when we get the perspex or the polythene, we can just run that through. If it is polythene or whatever we use, we'll have to put a block in the center as well so it doesn't dip. I know we have to exit these two pipes at some point anyway, but we can just make a little notch where the pipe runs through. All I'm gonna do is pre-drill some holes, one, two, three, four, five most likely, and uh, put some 550 screws in there, making sure it's flush with the underside of the ply. Combi, speed two, flush at the end here, flush at the bottom of the ply, come up about nine mil because the ply is 18 mil and I'm going across 50 mil to start my first screw. Pre-drill all the way, 50 mil. So to make my life easier, I'm gonna go down the other end, 50 mil and nine mil across. I'll only do one of these battens rather than all four on video, but um, otherwise it's going to be a bit long winded. Pull this out, make sure it's flush underneath. There we go, and that's going to create the upstand. So when the plastic goes on the top, it's sailing past and it's not touching. So yeah, I'm gonna do that for the remaining three and then show you the finished results. Right, so that is all complete now. Frame out done. I've even put a block on the top here, which is the same height, 34 mil high. I might even just put a screw through the ends into these so they don't come away, but they are really tough. And all I really need to do is figure out the pipe work now and ultimately I want this these two pipes to exit in the same side so if I'm leaning it up they could both come out the side or the top I'm going to cut this one short probably here and then attach some flexi to come out here and then this one here is going to be cut short here and then it's going to come out this side here so they're both going to exit on one side so I need to just now figure out um, the connections that are going to go on there to be able to attach my flexi pipe to that. It's just sorting out the pipe work and the connections and we are ready to rock and roll. Okay so just using like I said 25mm drill bit there's a screw here and ultimately want the hole around there. It might touch the board a little bit I'm not too worried about that. So that gets pushed through, put that end on, push that on and just connect them together. There we go. I'm just going to do the next one now. Right, try and get that pipe through without kinking it. There we go. Lovely. Alright, so let's cut this pipe to length. I don't want to put too much pressure on this hose, so I'm not going to pull it too tight. Cut it around an inch longer than I need it. There we go. I need to make sure it's nice and tight, otherwise it's just going to come loose and pop off. There we go. And I'm actually waiting on some little connectors because my plan is, let me get another one, to have another one like that but you get like a female to female which is one that goes into there and one go that goes into there and it connects the two together um, but I'm waiting on those parts so moving on to the pump I've used a mixture of car radiator hoses if you can see here heater hose for a car and it's got different radiuses this one was three quarter inch inside and this one was half inch that fitted on this bigger inlet lovely just a push fit really tight and to be honest and so did this one so these two don't need actual jubilee clips there and there they're so tight and then i just put this an off cut of this black hose through tightened it up because that one needed to be squeezed this one's gone in super tight so that is now ready to accept one of these so that will go on 
and push that arm. Do that up. And I'll tighten that up, and the same here. Push that arm and tighten it up, making sure I don't cross thread them. And that is basically ready to rock and roll. Um, like I said, I'm still waiting on these little female to female clips that connects two of these together. Um, I think for the water to go back into the hot tub, what I'm literally going to do is you can see this ledge. My well, the way the water's coming out is there to the coil, so it's coming this way. But to go back in, because the coil is probably going to live roughly here, I'm thinking just drilling a hole through the actual ledge that way, all the way through, and have like a little um, connector here. So I just click it onto here and it will pour the water through back in. That way, I can still keep the lid on, don't have to move the lid on and off to sort of plug it all in. And the uh, pump will live in that corner too, as well. So the, the way that's going to allow me to move this heater around, this coil around, is when I put the caster wheels on the bottom and I end up using all of this blue hose as the hose that connects it all together so I can have it down there, I can have it there, I can have it there. At the moment that's where the sun is, so directly behind me. If I have it laying up against this corner, then that would be the ultimate place to have it then, wouldn't it? So, um, and I'm just going to use the blue pipe to connect it all together. But I'm nearly there. Just all I really need to do now, like I said, drill this out um, and wait for those connections and put the wheels on the bottom. Ah, and eventually cover this in Perspex, but I'm not going to do that anytime soon because obviously I can't buy any online. Um, but yeah, be nice to test it up and get it up and running now because it's baking hot day. Um, absolutely baking and it'll be doing a brilliant job at the moment.